Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. Now most collectors seem to spend their time trying to collect the most mint, perfect condition version of a toy possible. A toy that has never been played with, that is as perfect as can possibly be, and best of all one that has never been removed from its box. But that is not how I collect. For me a played with well loved toy has a charm of its own. If the paint is worn, if the hands have been chewed, or if bits are missing, it's still a toy that I would have in my collection. Which is why I describe myself as a wabby sabby toy collector. Wabi Sabi is a Japanese term and worldview centred on the acceptance of imperfection. There's no direct Western translation for Wabi Sabi, but essentially it is the art of finding beauty in the imperfect and incomplete. Basically, things don't have to be perfect to be appreciated. And that is how I treat my toy collecting. If you've watched any of my videos, you will have noticed that the toys I collect generally start out as the broken remains or leftovers that most people wouldn't take a second look at. I originally started collecting like this as I couldn't afford to buy the better end of the market, or I just didn't feel I could justify spending a lot of money on a toy. So buying a broken toy or a very play-worn figure was what I did. When you collect like this, you soon learn to appreciate that these toys have had a previous life and have been played with and well loved by someone else. And even though they may look a bit rough and are missing pieces, they can still be appreciated. When restoring toys, you don't always have to get things perfect either. I just try to make them look as good as they can. And if I use a bit of Lego or the wrong sort of fabric, it just adds a new story to the life of a toy. So that's why I describe myself as a wabby sabby toy collector. So let's take a look at some of my favorite toys that I have in my collection currently. So these three action men are probably the most worn figures that I have in my collection, but they're also some of the ones that I have the most sort of strong attachment to because they're ones that I've restored and they are less than perfect. The guy on the right is uh, what I call Pinhead and he's a figure that I use in quite a lot of my sort of photography and other little setups here when I'm doing sort of filming and that. And he is a pretty battered figure. I picked him up off eBay only about six months ago and I paid nine pounds for him. And when he arrived, you can see he's got pinholes in his face. He's got pinholes in his chin. I think he's even got pierced ears. So some child has had a right go at him. The rest of the figure is in reasonable condition. He's actually still got his original hands, but the face is the sort of the worst part of him. And I really like this figure because it's so damaged. It's got quite a bit of character. Action Men figures tend to look a bit the same. So when you've got one like this, it just adds a little bit of a story to him. So some child has obviously played with him a lot and at some point got a bit bored and taken a pin out and started piercing his face. But that's sort of given him a new sort of story. And that's why I like that figure particularly. I've dressed him up in my sort of toy ploy clothing outfits that I've been making for him. And he's just a firm favorite of mine. I do tend to use him for all the sort of photo shoots that I want to do just because I love like the fact that his face is so worn. And you'll have seen this guy on the left in a recent video because he was the one that was painted red. So his face is still a little bit on the suntan sort of side. And the fact that he's still got sort of some war damage on him is a, just makes it an extra special toy for me because I like the fact that he has this sort of backstory of being painted red. You've still got little red sort of flashes all over his skin where the paint has sort of stayed sort of stuck in the sort of crevices and that. But I like the fact that he has that new story and he's never going to be a perfect figure. And when I picked him up, I never thought he would be a perfect figure, but he's certainly good enough for my collection. And the fact he has that damage to him just means it's an extra special figure. And then the guy on the right is another one you've seen me restore. This was very kindly donated to me. He was missing hands. I think he was missing a foot and all sorts of things. He's still got pinholes in his chest and he's still fairly dirty around the face. But the fact that it was a sort of donation and he's all battered and worn and I've done the best I can to get him looking nice just means that I really like this figure. So I have nicer figures than these, but these are the ones that I go to because they have this sort of extra story and they're not perfect. And that's why I like them. Fisher Price's Adventure People line is another set of toys that I've always sort of looked out for and always pick up no matter what sort of condition they're in because these toys were meant to be played with. And I think if you find a mint one, then there's something wrong in the world because always these toys have been battered and chewed and just generally sort of chucked around the garden. So the more battered they are, the more sort of history they have. And my collection is just full of these battered figures. I don't think I've got a single mint Fisher Price figure in my collection, everyone has some sort of issue with it. Even the carded ones are not perfect. They've all got sort of paint rubs, even though they're sort of still carded figures. If we look at this diver here, this guy has one pink leg. The other legs have gone a sort of 
well sort of bit of a paler color but for some reason he has a pink leg and he's also got these standard floppy head but I like the fact that he has these sort of variations to him likewise this uh, alien space pilot he looks pretty reasonable but he's got the floppiest head I've ever seen on one of these figures it just won't stay upright and he has the standard bits of sort of battered silver paint now I could easily sort of touch this figure up and repair the paint on it but I like these to, to be sort of beaten and worn I've even got this sort of I don't know what this guy is it's like a sort of Indian workman or something but he is terribly battered he's got the loose head and all the paint is rubbed off him now I do clean these figures when I get them but this is about as clean as he would ever go but it's still good enough to go in my collection because this collection is not about mint figures it's about having a sort of selection of figures that have a little bit of history to them and I think this is what you have to do when collecting toys is learn to appreciate the fact that they don't have to be perfect and they still can look quite nice on display I have about 40 of these figures now and they look great all lined up even though some of them are in a terrible state when you've got them all lined up they look amazing I've picked out three figures from my Imperial Army as well. I've got over 180 figures now in, in the army and they're all sort of a bit battered and a bit worn but these three have a special place in my sort of collection for various reasons. This first guy here which is the uh, Biker Scout has a strong sort of uh, connection with me because this is the first figure I ever worked out how to sort of reattach the head. So this was a figure I picked up off eBay with a sort of decapitated uh, biker scout head and I sat down and I worked out how I was going to fix him and make the video using this figure. So he's not a perfect figure. I think I have I've retouched all the paint on him. He still has some sort of blemishes on him. I never even de-yellowed him so he's sort of all stained on the arms. But the fact that uh, he has this detachable head is why I like this figure a lot of people wouldn't uh, sort of think it's worth keeping a figure with a broken head but for me this is my favorite one and likewise the snow trooper on the right again it's not a perfect figure this was actually made out of the remains of a load of figures uh, you can see he's got one white arm he's got one yellow arm and the legs are slight, slightly different one is yellow or one is orange but this was made out of sort of the remains of some figures that I happen to have so bits of limbs and that so he's never going to be a perfect figure but I, li I like the fact that he is so sort of sort of mismatched and made out of lots of other things again I don't think a lot of pe other people would sort of appreciate this but for me this is an important figure in my collection just because he's sort of the uh, Frankenstein's monster of uh, snow troopers and then this stormtrooper in the right was probably one of the first stormtroopers I got to build my imperial army so I picked this up maybe five or six years ago in a job lot he's been trodden on so you can actually see he's cracked it's got a split all the way through the body he's really loose and really quite yellowed and I've never done anything with him apart from touch the paint up but it, this was the sort of the start of my imperial army building so he's not a perfect figure but this was the start of me sort of collecting an army and that's why I really like this one and I'm never actually going to do anything with these figures they're always going to stay yellowed because uh, that sort of adds to the variation in the army that I have here Cyborg's figures uh, released here in the UK by Dennis Fisher and Strawberry Fair is another line of toys that I do like to collect I've not really shown them that much on my channel and uh, they're pretty hard figures to find but when you do find them they are a lovely thing to collect and they always have issues with them if we look at uh, this guy here you can see he's got quite a lot of chrome wear to his arms and the little uh, sort of sled thing has a bit of wear to it but more often than not when you find them they look like this they'll be missing so many parts this one's missing its head and missing its foot but to me this is a nice challenge a fit complete figure like this is really great but it will just go on my shelf and I can not a lot I can do with it a figure like this is so much potential for me because there's lots that needs to be found and there's lots that can be done to him so I much prefer to find a figure in this sort of condition because it means it will take me time to find the missing parts and it take me time to fix bits of him and make sure everything is working again and that sort of time and effort that uh, goes into it gives me a proper connection with this toy buying something and just putting on its shelf really it's fun but it's the fun is over very quickly having a toy like this where you have to sort of hunt around for pieces and stuff you get is not necessarily going to be the perfect match so it'll end up a little bit sort of disjointed that makes for a much more interesting figure and that's the sort of the art of this sort of wabby sabby toy collecting learning to appreciate something when it's not perfect and not complete and you just end up having much more fun with them 
Finally, I'd like to show you some of the carded figures that I have in my collection, which again fall into the category of sort of wabby savvy collecting, because I do have some nice carded figures, but really most of the carded figures I have look like this, which are the sort of the cheaper end of the market, because I don't like to spend a lot of money on carded figures. I'd rather spend a little and have something that has a bit of character to it. So all of the Fisher Price figures I have, I've paid very little for, especially the carded stuff, but that's because the cards are less than perfect. You can see here I have the X-ray man on a card but at some point he was obviously marked down from 75p to 50p and it's been written on in marker pen so a lot of people wouldn't like this card because it has this writing on it but to me that's just the sort of a history of this carded figure it obviously didn't sell well and so they were marking it down to try and get rid of it and still no one bought it and that's how it's ended up sort of a bit battered and a bit worn I have another one here that's obviously come from the same shop, same sort of markdown. Again, the card to most people would have been classed as a ruined, but I like this sort of addition to this toy. And this little one in the middle has obviously had the worst life ever. It's hard to know what has happened to this. It's barely held together anymore. The card is fully sort of ripped up, but this was uh, sold in Woolworths, which is a famous shop here in the UK, reduced down to well, it's hard to say. It was £1.35 then. It looks like it was reduced to 69p or 67p. Hard to say. But the card is pretty rough. I think a lot of people would actually remove this figure from the card. But I like the story that's gone on there. Same with the C-3PO that I have here. As you can see, the actual blister is split and it's a little bit on the battered side. But the really sort of nice thing is that it has a sign on there or someone's even written on Biro on the front, 99p. So this sort of ruins the card for a lot of people. There's some water damage at the top. I think if we turn over, it's still a little bit battered. But you can pick these cards up a lot cheaper just because they have these sort of details added to them. And I like these little stories that go with the cards. So I hope this video has been of interest to you, showing that you don't have to collect perfect things and you can still find joy in the battered and the sort of the lower end of the market. And even the broken stuff is worth displaying because it still looks looks great and toys are toys they're supposed to have been played with and they're supposed to have had a bit of a history to them nothing's ever going to be mint so just enjoy them for what they are thanks for watching thanks for watching toy ploy subscribe for more great videos you can also follow toy ploy on twitter facebook and instagram